Today, I am going to attempt to do the three marker challenge. Yeah, stay tuned because I have a feeling the struggle is about to get real. Hi, Shanna Rowe Jackson here from Caution Arts at Play, and today I am going to try the three marker challenge. Just want to have a little disclaimer. I don't work with markers very often, so I don't know how well this is gonna go. But I see these videos all the time on YouTube and I think they look like a lot of fun. So I don't have a ton of markers and normally when I work in markers I work in Faber-Castell pit pens because I like the fact that they're light fast. But I don't have many colors of those yet so I'm gonna go with um, some Spectrum Noir, Noir? Spectrum Noir markers um, because I have a few of these sets so I have a little bit more colors and I also have um, a 12 pack of Prismacolor markers. So these are all alcohol based markers. I'm not sure how well the two brands work together, but we'll find out together. So what I'm going to do is first I'm going to take them out of their packages and I'm going to just throw them in the bag. I already have, I'm going to take out my colorless blender. I am going to use this because I have seen other people use it and it's technically not a color. It's so I'm going to use it, well, I'm going to attempt to use it when I do my piece. Um, I already have a bunch that are already out of their package, but I'm just going to take the rest out. I'm going to throw them in a bag and mix them all up together. I have some grays, I have some greens, I have some blues, and then... Um, one of the reasons why I decided... Sorry if this is really loud. One of the reasons why I decided to throw my Prisma colors in the mix is because I don't actually have any other red markers. So I don't know if I just don't tend to be drawn to red a lot in my artwork. So I don't have any red markers in the Spectrum Noir. I may have had some at one point, but I know that my boxer got into one of the packages of um, markers or a couple of them and chewed up a bunch of my markers because he likes to chew on things that he shouldn't be chewing on. So I'm just throwing them in this bag. I'm mixing them all together. And this is where it's going to get really interesting, folks. I don't have a blindfold. So I am going to put <laughs> my bomber hat on backwards. <laughs> this is where you get to know the real Shanna. <laughs> anyway, so um, this is a pretty thick hat and it has two different layers of fabric. There's no seeing through the back of this. Um, and I'm also going to turn my head the other way so there's no cheating. And again, I really am not experienced in markers. So even if I did cheat when it comes to the colors, there's no guarantee it's going to come out good. But I am too honest for my own good, so I'm not going to cheat. I'm going to see if I can make this so you can actually see. They're all mixed together. All right, folks. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, God. So, yeah. I think I'm going to wear it like this from now on. I think it's real stylish, yep. Oh, it's sticking to my chapstick, the fur. Okay. All right. So, I'm going to mix them all together. I don't know if you can see because I can't see anything. All right. Marker number one. Hopefully you see that. Oh, so you can see the color. Oh, there's my dog. <laughs> I don't know if I should keep filming or not. Do not mind the sound of the chihuahua in the background. That is my daily life. Okay. Here's marker number two. Hopefully they're two entirely different colors. And... I don't know. Here is marker number three. And there we go. Let's see what we got. <laughs> Oh, that's not too bad. I have a nice pretty blue. It's BT7. Oh, for a nice dark brown, it looks like, or a gray from Prismacolor, and a pretty spring green. I think I can work with that. That's something that, um, yeah, I think I can work with that. It's three different colors, so there we go. We shall see what I come up with. Hey, welcome to the voiceover. So here we go on my little adventure. <laughs> I'm 
what I am doing right now is a trick that I saw um, on one of Hello Alice's videos where she takes alcohol and she uses it with a brush to lift some marker that she puts like on, you know, just on a palette. She just scribbles on a palette and lifts the marker with alcohol on a brush and uses it almost like watercolor. So I thought that that would be a fun thing to try because I have a little bit more experience in watercolor than I do markers. As you can see, <laughs> I definitely struggled through it a little bit. But I think that this is a fun way to get the most out of the medium. And I think it really like speaks to like the versatility of the medium and the different things you can do. So you'll see me doing that quite a bit here. It'll give me like some lighter values than if I just went straight in with the marker. I'm really excited about the colors that I got actually because I wanted to do this drawing. This was the um, outline that I had in mind when I decided I was going to do the, the three marker challenge. And I was going to do this drawing no matter what colors I got. And this is Indian corn. So I'm pretty excited about it. This is actually the line drawing for one of my colored pencil pieces. I'll insert it so you can see what the colored pencil piece looks like. It's actually a line drawing for a tutorial that I did for um, Ann Kohlberg's color magazine a while back. But so I just decided that I was just going to reuse this outline because I love, um, I love Indian corn and I think that it is really pretty and a lot of fun. It's probably not seasonally <laughs> correct right now, but it's, I don't know. I just think it's a lot of fun and that you can do a lot with it. So I was actually very excited when I got the colors. Really, the wild card of the colors was that light blue. But that's one of my favorite blues. Like, I use that in a lot of my artwork because it makes me think of, you know, sky blue. And I love to paint skies and stuff like that. So generally speaking, like, these colors, actually, all three of these colors are colors I use quite often. But it's not necessarily colors that I would choose to do this piece in. So that's what really got me excited because I wouldn't necessarily do corn in spring green. Although now looking at the video, it kind of looks more yellow. So it ended up working out, but it really, especially next to the other colors, it looks a lot more yellow, but it really is a green color. So it's not something that I would necessarily choose to do for this, for this subject. So I'm really excited about that. And of course, the blue is not something I would choose. The brown, yeah, obviously, the, you can see that done in um, glass gem corn quite often. But so right now, what you're seeing me do is I'm just kind of going through and putting in my lighter green color, that like spring green. And this is with one of the Spectrum Noir markers. So I don't really have a lot of experience, as I said in my intro, with markers. So this was like a lot of fun for me because I want to learn how to do more marker stuff. Stuffs? That makes sense. <laughs> I want to learn how to do more with markers. Um, but so this isn't going to be my best piece, but I definitely had a lot of fun with it. So I'm just going through and I'm starting to try and go in with that brown dark brown marker the prismacolor I it d actually did end up turning out to be a dark brown I couldn't tell by the cap it kind of looked like a grayish color when I first chose it um, but it is a dark brown and those are bullet nibs so I had a harder time with the with the um, prismacolor marker than I did the two spectrum noir markers because it just didn't blend as easily so you'll see me struggling through that quite a bit and they also bled a lot so I don't think I'll be doing a heck of a lot more with Prismacolor markers in the future. Generally speaking, I probably won't, I won't do a whole lot of work with alcohol markers in the future anyways. You probably won't see a lot of that from me. I love the way it looks and I love what people do with alcohol markers, but I'm not a huge fan of the fact that by nature, they're not really light fast. So I actually like water-based markers for that reason, even though they're not as easy to blend. But I think that this was a really good practice piece for me. And I am doing this on, um, what is it? Strathmore Mixed Media 400 Series. Um, it's, like a, it's like a bristle board. And it works really well for markers. I actually love this paper for a lot of things. 
It's got a nice smooth surface and it's really strong. And I actually am just working on my coffee table right now. So I'm just going through and putting in a few more of the light corn and I keep going back and forth between the brown and the green. And at this point, I don't really know how I'm going to incorporate that blue again. I'm just, you know, going through and outlining and filling it in that way and leaving a little bit of white for a highlight. I love drawing glass gem corn. It's something that I've drawn a few times, actually, mostly in color pencil, and I've drawn it in ballpoint pen before. So I didn't really need to look at anything. I didn't even look at my color pencil piece to do this. I am so in the routine of drawing corn cornels. <laughs> cornels! I made my new a new word. Yay! Kernels of corn is what I was trying to say. Man, I am on top of it today. I apologize <laughs> that you have to deal with this while listening to the voiceover. Um, yeah, so I'm pretty well in the habit of drawing corn is what I was getting at. And so I didn't really, I didn't look at a reference or anything. I already had the line drawing from before. Um, I like to keep my original line drawings and I actually scanned this in so that I could still have a copy of the line drawing. Um, but yeah, so far, like, I don't know. I had a lot of fun with this. Like I said, I was pushing my boundaries because it's not a medium I work with a lot and it was just fun to loosen up. It's definitely a lot looser than um, colored pencil. And you're going to see me use a number of techniques. I was using like a um, ink transfer technique where I was putting the two tips of the markers together, um, trying to get some of the ink to go on some of the blue ink to go on the that green and you can see that in some of the kernels and I've also been taking my brush dipped in alcohol and rubbing that directly on one of the nibs you know like on the marker itself to try and spread it on there that way so I used a number of techniques that I've seen other people do in videos which is why I love YouTube so much because <clears throat> You get to see the way different people do different things, and it's just a great way to learn how to do a medium that you're not used to. I've done a couple of marker pieces recently, and they were in um, pit pens, in the Faber-Castell pit pens. One of them was a self-portrait, which I was, like, really excited about because it was, like, my first real marker drawing. And when I say real, I mean not, like, a doodle or, you know what I mean, like... <laughs> I played around with markers, but I never really did a completed piece is what I'm trying to get at. And that one was more my regular style. And other than that, the extent of my marker it, like usage really has been to do like outlining with black pit pens and stuff. Because I do some illustration, but I don't typically use marker to color it in, which is weird. I usually use either colored pencil or even ink tents. I'm going to start using markers more though. I want to eventually get the complete set of the Faber-Castell uh, pit pens because I just love those so much. I love that they're India ink. Um, and uh, no, obviously I'm not sponsored by them clearly because I'd be using their products. This video isn't sponsored in any way. It just happens to be the um, alcohol-based markers that I had laying around. So now I'm just trying to add in like some shadows to some of the areas. And I am scribbling that brown on to that lid there. I'm just using a Tupperware lid <laughs> and scribbling the brown on there and lifting it with alcohol on my brush and just trying to create some shadow areas in the husk of the corn. That brown was really dark, which is great because it helps to have contrast. Like I'm glad I didn't get three colors that were all, you know, mid-tone or three light colors or three dark colors. Like I think I got a pretty good balance as far as tonal value goes in my colors. So I'm really excited about that. And I'm just going in and darkening some of the areas in the shadows with that brown and just working on the husk. As you can see. And I definitely went outside of the lines a lot. 
with the brown especially, oh, I had such a hard time with that Prismacolor brown because the, the nib end was, the bullet nib, I should say, was so dark when I first initially started using it and I didn't like that so much and it doesn't blend out well. So then I was using the chisel end, which ended up being a little bit lighter, but it was much harder to get in the details. And so I definitely wandered outside of the lines of some of the kernels. And you'll see later, I'll try and like straighten up my lines with the brown again. So you're going to see some of the um, kernels will be outlined a little bit more than others. And it's basically to try and clean up my edges a little bit which was a whole other struggle in and of itself because I tried to use my black pit pen, my, what, what size is it? I think it's a size small. I tried to go in with my liner and line it and I'm running out of ink. So I actually need a new pen because that's one of the downfalls of pit pens is they, um, they, you can't refill them. So I'm going to have to buy a new one. And the only reason why I was going to do that is because I've seen in other people's marker challenges that they have used either, they've used black and white on top of what they're using. So they use a liner, which they don't count as their three marker challenge. And they also use, a lot of people will use a gel pen, which I didn't do. I didn't end up adding in any highlights. I just tried to reserve the highlights that I wanted to have. So I was going to use my liner, but it didn't end up working out. So I... I actually tried two different pens to line it and it didn't end up working out. So I ended up having to use that brown to line a lot of things. So really, I ended up just using these three markers. And of course, you know, some alcohol. I don't even think I ended up really... I attempted to use my blending marker, my colorless blender, and it didn't work well either. Here, you can see me trying to line stuff and it's just not working the way I need it to. And I go back and forth on that a lot. So what you're seeing me do is I'm just going in and refining. I'm trying to um, pick out some of the details. There's some strings in there that show up. So I'm just putting the, the brown in there. I definitely got frustrated sometimes because, like I said, it's just not... The blending just wasn't working as well as I wanted, especially with that Prismacolor one. I was actually really pleased with the Spectrum Noir because they're not very expensive. And that's one reason why I haven't invested in Copics because A, I don't do marker enough to invest that much money. And B, I don't want to invest that much money in something that I know is not technically going to be light fast. So if I'm going to do alcohol-based stuff, I would prefer to just use the, uh, the cheaper brands. Because I'm really just doing this as a fun way to loosen up a little bit, step out of my comfort zone, and to get used to markers in general. And I did actually have a lot of fun, and I'm really happy with the way this came out. I think I will end up doing some more challenges in the future. So if there's a challenge you would like, me, like to see me do, please comment below and let me know about a challenge. I'm there's a few that I have in mind, but it's just a matter of getting the time to do it. So, if there's any that you have seen that you like and you would like me to try, I work in a bunch of different mediums, so I'm pretty much up for almost anything. So, just let me know if there's something you'd like to see me try. So, yeah, I'm just going in with my details and oh, sorry. I ended up having to I it skipped a little bit there because I paused it so that I could go and see if I could find another liner and it didn't end up working. I do not have another black pen to line with. So yeah, the frustration was awful. Then when I came back to it, I decided I wanted to incorporate that blue a little bit more. I had the blue in, you know, the lighter kernels, but I wanted to incorporate some more of the blue, like in a darker one to just create some more contrast and just vary the, um, like vary the values and stuff just have some more things to look at really get that color in there more 
I want to apologize for all the noise <laughs> in the beginning. If I do another three marker challenge, I will not use a plastic bag. <laughs> like that intro is probably the loudest intro between that and the dog barking. I am really sorry and I didn't want to refilm it because I was going to, I'm just going to use the colors and I, there's no way to refilm it and make it okay, like without rechoosing colors and going through all that. And I really was happy with the color choices. So I apologize if that was noisy. So there I am just kind of outlining some of the kernels. I didn't want to outline all of them. I just, because I wanted to have varying line width and stuff. And I'm signing my name to it and just doing a few more touch-ups. And that is my marker challenge. I hope that you like it. Like I said, if you want to see me do more challenges like it, let me know in the comments below. If you like what you see, please subscribe. Thank you.